Welcome to episode two of the filming locations for the movie Cool Hand Luke. On episode one, we showed you possible locations where Paul Newman vandalized downtown parking meters and places in the country where the road crews slaved in the hot sun. We visited the Stockton Park, which was the site of Division of Corrections Road Prison Camp 36. We also checked out the train tracks and the other escape routes of Paul Newman and the place where he got beat down by the prison warden. Now Sarah and I will take you to several obscure locations, which are some of the most interesting filming sites used in the classic film. There is the old store. Now, it looks a lot different because the gas pumps are gone, the canopy is gone, but the original store building is still here. It's amazing. It's right out here in the movie that uh, these two little boys come up to Paul Newman and uh, ask him why he's got the chains on. And Best way is to get rid of them leg irons. That is the original building that's left from the movie set. Paul Newman came from around this direction. And right across the street was the church. This, this was a functioning building, not just a set building. I believe so. This... I believe it was a country store at one time. Take a look on the inside. This, of course, was not in the movie at all, but I think this was actually a country store, a rural country store. There was a road over here, Bowman Road, and across it was a bridge over there, Brant Bridge, I believe. What's funny is that we're in Central California and it's nowhere near the south where Cool Hand Luke takes place. Right across the street here was the old church. Church would have been right in this spot right here. There was a bridge some kind of walkway here into that church. Of course, Paul Newman goes into this church at night. He's still on the escape. He goes in, he talks to God. He gets down on his hands and knees and he starts praying and George Kennedy walks in the back of the church and the, from this direction right here comes the police cars. You may remember the scene where Strother Martin is talking to Paul Newman and says, What we've got here is failure to communicate. Well, in this church here, Paul Newman mentions that line again. And just at that moment, a shot rings out through the window. What we got here is a failure to communicate. After the shooting that took place right here, they dragged Paul Newman out here. He was kind of half staggering into an awaiting police car right here. George Kennedy is so enraged by what he just saw, his friend being shot that he charges at the officers. They talked about which hospital they were gonna take him to, take him to the county hospital, which was closer. And Strother Martin says, no, we're gonna take him to the county prison hospital. But that's an hour away, he's gonna make it. Get out of the way, he's our. Strother Martin was just a cruel, heartless bastard in this movie. It's amazing to think that such an iconic movie and an iconic scene was shot right here. And you would never know it. There's no indications here that uh, this is where that movie was shot back in, I believe it was October 1966 they were out here. 
I think they were here for about three weeks. I believe it was that direction that there was a black lady and was putting up laundry or something. And there were some buildings out that direction as well that were also in the scene. They've been removed as well. It's kind of neat that this building has been left here. Paul Newman movie history filmed right here in 1967. You know, I remember being a kid in 1967 and didn't live too far from here, but uh, man, it just didn't seem like it was that long ago. But when you start adding up the numbers, uh, of course, Paul Newman is deceased now. This is definitely a very old structure. Glad it's still here for us to see. It's really hard to think that this broken down place is where Paul Newman shot his movie. It's right about here where Paul Newman sat down and asked that little black boy for that ax. You might remember the Paul Newman challenged the little black boy, bitch you can't do it, can't, bitch you can't bring that ax to me. So he goes off and he gets it. But you ain't strong enough. Strong enough for what? You couldn't heft an axe. Can too. I bet you can't. Can too. I bet you can't. Can too. And once the little black boy brings that uh, axe to him, he says, ah, oh, you better let me handle it. You better let me handle that, son. Then he breaks the chains of his shackles, and then he goes off. He rips the stripes off of his pants as well so he can tie up the loose ends of the chains. Very cool. Paul Newman comes this direction. You can see him sprinkling cayenne pepper on the ground. Throw the dog scent off. Yeah, the awning's gone. Well, in just about every movie location we visited, I've asked you if you've seen the movie. Have you seen Cool Hand Luke? No. Are you planning to watch it now? After this? Yes. No. There's one scene where Paul Newman is facing this direction, standing approximately where I'm standing. And in the background, you can see a building. The same telephone pole that is back there looks like it's the same telephone pole that was in the background of that Paul Newman shot. I'm on Whiskey Slough Road over Trapper Slough, and I want to show you about this scene back here. It's where Paul Newman escaped from underneath those tunnels. We are here in a different month, a different season. Of course, the filming crew was out here in October, uh, early morning scene. Uh, Paul Newman comes up from underneath these pipes as the dogs are chasing him. But this particular scene was shot here. He comes up here and arrives here at the top. Over in that direction, we're gonna go, and that's where they filmed the trestle scene where he jumps off the railroad trestle. But we are on the Stockton Delta. And I just have to share with you, there's some delicious berries right here growing. I wonder if Paul Newman got to enjoy some of these berries, but they probably weren't here in October. We came out to the whole area of Stockton next to the railroad tracks because I wanna show you the place where the whole train station was, also during the, the chase scene. The building is no longer here, but I've determined where it was. It's right here next to the railroad tracks. You can still see the foundation of the building right here. There's evidence of it. it. Doesn't look like it was a very big building. It's a night scene, but in the film you can see that on the station it says Holt. I believe I remember them sitting on the steps while they were doing a search for Paul Newman. Unfortunately, the building is gone. The concrete is still here. Pieces of railroad all around. Here's a railroad spike right here. There's the tracks. That way's to Stockton. This way to the west will lead us to the trestle where Paul Newman runs across and jumps into the water. It's 
So I came out here to Bacon Island, west of Stockton on the Stockton Delta. You'll recognize where I'm at, probably. Paul Newman ran across that bridge during his great escape. You gotta keep in mind that a lot of the escape scenes were shot throughout San Joaquin County in various places, some west of Highway 99, some east of Highway 99, but you'll probably remember that scene. Paul Newman comes running across the trestle. Then he goes over here and he jumps right into the water. And here we have plenty of warnings not to go on these tracks. So I just, I really can't resist doing this, although it's against the law. This is what Paul Newman does in the film. He runs down the tracks and he jumps over here. They set up the camera down here to shoot above the bridge. Paul Newman jumps into that little slough right there and makes his escape. So I'm gonna walk underneath the bridge here and get the camera angle that was used when Paul Newman jumped into the water in his great escape. You know, I was doing some calculations 53 years ago is when he was out here. So over a half a century ago, as you can see that there's a lot of berry vines that have grown up since then. The camera would have been a little bit lower than this. Let's see if we can get a better angle. As you can see, it's kind of choked off by lots of plants down here, but he jumped, or stunt probably, a stunt person jumped off into this water right here. Looks like it would have had to have been further down because this is all. Well, these, these berry vines were not here at the time because the camera was a little bit farther out. I can't get to them because the vines are in the way, but. Oh, some more berries. Awesome berries. There was a train going over just a second ago. I know, but I wonder what it sounds like under here when it's going over the top. When you watch the film, it's kind of hard to believe that all those people are, are dead, but you know, they seem very much alive. Those pipes that we saw earlier, this is what they're carrying. They're carrying water. Something interesting that I also want to point out, in the movie you'll see these telephone poles along the south side of the bridge here. The poles are still here, but they're no longer functioning. There's the poles that are seen in the movie, but they have been cut off and no longer in use. It's kind of hard to wrap your mind around the fact that a legendary Hollywood actor shot an iconic film right on these railroad ties that I'm walking on. I'm out here on Stark Road, west of Lathrop, California, and you may recognize the scene behind me already. It's the place where Morgan Woodward shoots a turtle and then Paul Newman jumps down to get it. It was shot right here. It's a little bit earlier in the morning than when the crew was out here, but this is where the road crew was. So in the movie, you will see George Kennedy, who is standing approximately right here, that bridge, or that little platform for irrigation, was actually, they actually had a building around it. I think it was a steel shed that's been replaced. Most of this structure looks like it's been replaced from wood to steel or concrete. Morgan Woodward actually shoots the turtle down here. Paul Newman fetches it down there. This area has changed quite a bit. Those posts down there were in the movie. And in right approximately in that area is where Paul Newman goes down and he grabs the turtle. I think the water level may have been a little higher. You'll also see that structure back there, also in the background of the scene with Paul Newman and the turtle. 
I think it's kind of amusing how the turtle that they used in the scene was actually probably a plastic turtle, but when Paul Newman sticks a stick down there, the supposedly dead turtle <laughs> is latched onto his stick, which doesn't quite make sense, but you can tell that that turtle is obviously a fake rubber reproduction. This tree was not here at the time, so Paul Newman would have ran down there. There's a fence that's preventing me from going down there. The interesting thing is that uh, a lot of the actors that were here uh, were on the side of the road. There's one scene in particular where Paul Newman is told to fetch water. There are vehicles over there. So he goes over and he fetches the water, brings it over here. After the turtle is shot, Paul Newman runs back to the truck. He's already prearranged the fact that he's gonna steal the truck. Morgan Woodward looks back there. Paul Newman would have got in the truck there, and he takes off in this direction. Morgan Woodward is very surprised at what's happened. George Kennedy, approximately in this area right here, jumps onto the running board of the passenger side of the truck, and they take off together down that way. Morgan Woodward takes a shot at Paul Newman. Paul Newman lifts at the dump bed dumped the trash in the road and took off that way. The bed was raised so that the bullets would not hit the passengers inside the vehicle. This location right here is pretty much the same as it was back in 1966. As you can tell, the curve in the road is the same as it was back in that era. And they took off that way, direction to the north. And he made his great escape, his last escape. A lot of this area has been developed with housing and farms and trees. so kind of makes it difficult at times to match up locations, but this definitely is the spot of the turtle shooting scene. So a guy in a truck just stopped by and he recognized me and said hi, and I told him that uh, Cool Hand Luke was shot here, and right now we're gonna go up and show you the scene where the famous car wash scenes were taking place that turned on so many people so long ago. Stark and Inland Road, not far from where the turtle was shot in that scene with Morgan Woodward and Paul Newman. But right behind me is the scene where the famous car wash scene was shot. Now the house is gone. In its place is this farm labor camp. I'm really excited that one of the people that I was in touch with through Facebook actually told me where this farmhouse was because I had no idea San Joaquin County is such a big place. But uh, this has been the location identified by one individual. Everything matches up. Unfortunately, the farmhouse is gone. It would have been right in this direction. Right down here is the ditch where all the actors were shooting a scene. You'll remember they were doing some ditch work down here. Try to get on this other side here. The film crew was panning in this direction here. I'll give you a perspective. Paul Newman, George Kennedy, and all the rest of them were down in this ditch checking out the girl. So many iconic actors who were out here for this scene, and it just looks like typical Central Valley farm country. You would never guess that a classic Hollywood movie was shot right here. Too bad the farmhouse is gone, but it is. It's been replaced. It looked pretty bad in the movie, so I'm not surprised that it's been replaced. It was like a who's who of Hollywood out here. There was Paul Newman, Dennis Hopper was here, Robert Donner, and Ralph Waite of the Waltons fame. Harry Dean Stanton was here. And Wayne Rogers, the guy who was in MASH later, he asked for permission to stop and wipe his glasses to spend time looking at her. Wiping it off there, boss! Wiping it off, man. George Kennedy does the same and says, Damn things is blocking the scenery. Rogers later says that 
she has only one safety pin holding that dress on and says, come on, safety pin, pop. Come on, safety pin, pop. There's a famous scene where George Kennedy looks up and says, Lord, whatever I done, don't strike me blind for the next couple of minutes. Whatever I done, don't strike me blind for another couple of minutes. Lou Antonio, playing Coco, turns to Paul Newman and says she doesn't know what she's doing, and Paul Newman says, Oh, boy, she knows exactly what she's doing. She's driving us crazy and loving every minute of it. Joy Harmon was 27 years old when she was out here and claimed she had no idea that she was being hired for such a tantalizing scene. When she arrived in Stockton, Harmon had second thoughts after the producers actually suggested that the shoot would go better if she smoked marijuana beforehand to act more uninhibited. That upset her so bad that she called her dad and he urged her to quit the film and come home. She told director Stuart Rosenberg that she was heading home, but she decided to stay after they sent her flowers and chocolate and told her to forget about the pot smoking. She never really did anything big other than that one scene. And today she runs a bakery in Burbank, California. All right, so I'm out on Jack Tone Road and there's one scene in the movie where they're all on the side of the road where these trees are. And obviously this is not the same trees, but you'll recall a scene where they're out having lunch it's out in this field, believe it or not. Out on Jack Tone Road. This would be the field where they had lunch. They took a lunch break after working hard in the fields. They were on that side of the road over there where that fresh orchard is. It's a new orchard, so it's not the same trees. But yeah, out on here, Jack Tone Road is where they actually shot that scene. I see that there's some gourds growing out here. Check it out. Some gourds. One of the most frustrating aspects of doing this video is I have not been able to find the exact location where Paul Newman is sitting on the back of a flatbed. His legs are shackled. He's got a cigarette in his mouth. And it's the one that's used for the promotion. It's used on video covers. Not been able to find it. A lot of people have told me that it's because there's been a lot of orchards that have popped up over the last 50 years that have blocked that view that I'm looking for. Been looking for a specific set of mountains and trees in the background, have not been able to find it. It's been very frustrating. So on what is the wrench track, I wanna thank you for joining us on this episode of History Hunters. We would love to have you as a subscriber. We'd also like to hear your thoughts about what you thought about this video and about our other videos. Give us a like if you can. Also, catch you next time. Thanks for joining us on History Hunters.